Okay, in our video series of rheumatology lectures, in this video, we are going to talk about Sjogren syndrome. We are going to discuss the presentation, the clinical features, the cause, as well as the diagnosis and management of Sjogren syndrome in detail. A 40 year old lady comes to your clinic and tells you that doctor for the last few months, I have been feeling that my mouth is very dry. It's difficult for me to swallow food. I need to have a bottle of water or a glass of water with me and I take sips of water when I am trying to eat something. And whatever I try, my mouth is always dry. With that, doctor, I have this feeling of sensation of some sand is there in my eyes, a gritty sensation in my eyes because the eyes are also dry. The patient will complain that he, he, she is feeling a sensation of sand in the eye, gritty feelings. That is a classical presentation of Sjogren syndrome. What is Sjogren syndrome? Sjogren syndrome is actually named after Henrik Sjogren, an ophthalmologist who died, who actually found this disease, discovered it in 1933. It is an autoimmune disorder characterized by lymphocytic infiltration and destruction of the salivary glands and the lacrimal glands. It is an autoimmune disorder where the body is destroying its body parts, where the immune system destroys the salivary glands, parotid glands, submandibular glands, and it also destroys the lacrimal gland. So it is basically destroying all the secretory glands in the uh, head. It is destruction of the salivary gland results in decreased production of the saliva that results in dry mouth. Decreased production of the tears from the lacrimal gland results in dry eyes. That is Sjogren syndrome. It is more common in females as compared to males 9 ratio 1 and it affects middle age females as like all other rheumatological diseases. Do you remember which disease we talked about in our previous videos which is more common in young males and that is also an autoimmune disease? If you remember that, comment in the comment section below. Sjogren syndrome is divided into primary Sjogren and secondary Sjogren. Primary Sjogren is the one in which you do not know the cause. What is causing this Sjogren syndrome? You have no idea. But the disease is there, the immune system is destroying the salivary glands, the lacrimal glands. And it is associated with HLA-DR5-2. The cause is idiopathic. When you know the cause, when it is associated with any other disease, that is called as secondary Sjogren. And we discussed in SLD, that in SLD and systemic sclerosis, it is sometimes associated with Sjogren syndrome, dry mouth, dry eyes. Because SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic sclerosis are autoimmune diseases and these there, there are antibodies that attack the body and they can result in secondary Sjogren. In secondary Sjogren, we know that it's the SLE and this Sjogren syndrome is a part of SLE. This Sjogren syndrome is a part of systemic sclerosis that is called as a secondary Sjogren syndrome. It is associated with primary biliary cirrhosis. Viral infections are known to trigger the Sjogren syndrome. Viral infections like HIV, viral infections like Epstein-Barr virus. These infections have been shown to be associated to cause Sjogren syndrome. Clinical presentation of Sjogren syndrome is very simple. Whenever the salivary glands are damaged, there will be xerostomia, dry mouth. And with dry mouth, patient will be complaining of dysphagia because the salivary gland, the salivary gland produces saliva and that saliva helps lubricate the bolus and the, that lubricated bolus passes down the esophagus easily. When the bolus is not lubricated properly, it will get stuck in the esophagus and patient will have dysphagia and these patients will most commonly tell you that I have a glass of water whenever I am trying to eat something. I drink sips of water with it to pass down the bolus. With that, dental caries takes place, damage to the teeth takes place. Remember the important function of saliva. Saliva produces antibacterial activity. Saliva protects the oral cavity. Saliva lubricates the oral cavity and protects it. When the lubrication is lost, just like in the engine, when the lubrication is lost, everything grinds on each other. Everything gets dry and the engine stops working. The same way, 
saliva lubricates the whole mouth and when the lubrication is gone the antibacterial activity of the saliva is gone it results in dental caries the bacteria grow on the uh, teeth parotid gland enlargement due to the damage of parotid gland tongue fissure because the tongue also is dry and results in damage to the tongue when the lacrimal gland in the eyes gets damaged it results in dry eyes xerophthalmia in xerophthalmia patient will have no tears or dry eyes these patients will most common they won't tell you that they are not having any uh, production of tears they will just come to you and they will tell you that doctor i have this gritty sensation in my eyes all the time i have this sandy sensation that someone has put sand into my eyes that is the presentation of xerostomia xerophthalmia keratoconjunctivitis seca when these eyes this uh, tear production in the eye protects the eye it lubricates the eye and when uh, it removes the normal the dust and pollution from the eyes when this uh, normal lacrimal gland productions are stopped it results in eye to become dry and it leads to conjunctivitis keratitis so keratoconjunctivitis seca due to dry eyes the conjunctiva is getting infected sensation of sand in eye remember you would hear about something called as sicca syndrome whenever there is dry mouth with dry eyes that is called as sicca syndrome now you will be thinking that i have been talking about sjogren syndrome and where has this sicca syndrome come from remember sjogren syndrome can sometimes have extra ocular and extra oral presentations other than dry mouth and dry eyes patients can have the systemic manifestations of sjogren syndrome we'll talk about those systemic manifestations now but remember if the sjogren syndrome is not associated with any systemic manifestations that is called as a sicca syndrome where where it is isolated dry mouth and dry eyes nasal dryness can also take place bronchial dryness resulting in dry cough vaginal dryness can also take place dry skin can also take place so other glands of the body can also be affected there can be systemic presentation but these are not affected when there is sicca syndrome which is specifically the dry eyes and the dry mouth extra glandular symptoms other than the attack on the glands the autoimmune this is an autoimmune disease and this immune uh, autoimmune disease can affect the joints and it can cause arthralgias in 70% cases patient would complain of small joint pains Raynaud's phenomena can be there in 15 to 30% of the cases dysphagia is there dysphagia occurs due to loss of the saliva but it can also occur in the extra glandular manifestations as loss of myenteric plexus in the esophagus the myenteric plexus can also get damaged due to sjogren syndrome so it's not just the xerostomia dry mouth in the extra glandular manifestation it can also damage the myenteric plexus in the esophagus and results in dysphagia so these things are not present in sicca syndrome sicca syndrome is just dry eyes and dry mouth sjogren syndrome can have extra glandular symptoms the classical presentation would be that they would give you a case of middle aged woman known rheumatoid arthritis known sle case now presented to you with dry eyes and dry mouth is it primary or is it secondary this is a secondary sjogren syndrome because we know the cause that it is associated with rheumatoid arthritis and it is the sle that is causing sjogrens coming to the diagnosis in the diagnosis the clinical symptoms are very important the symptoms are a giveaway for the diagnosis with that you do certain antibody tests you detect certain antibodies the specific antibodies for sjogren syndrome are anti ro and anti la antibodies anti ro and anti la antibodies are also called as anti ssa antibodies anti ssb antibodies so you must remember the ro and la antibodies in 70% cases if these turn out to be positive and patient has symptoms this is classical sjogren syndrome and these antibodies basically target the ribonucleoprotein antigen of the epithelial cells if someone asks you or if in exams you get a question that what is the most accurate test the most accurate test is biopsy of the labial gland you take biopsy from the labial gland and you look it under the microscope although it is rarely performed 
But if in exams they ask you that what is the most accurate test, it's not the antibodies. The most accurate test is biopsy. In biopsy, what you see is that you see lymphocytic infiltrates with fibrosis of the gland. Very important. This histological manifestation is tested in exams many times that there is lymphocytic infiltrate. Patient, they will give you a scenario that patient has dry eyes and dry mouth. And when they did a labial biopsy, what will be the uh, presentation on the labial biopsy? You will click on the lymphocytic infiltrates. As we said in the definition that it is lymphocytic infiltration, the lymphocytes are damaging. Lymphocytic infiltrates with fibrosis of the gland. Remember in real life, it is rarely performed, this uh, salivary gland biopsy. In real life, we just diagnose the patients with clinical manifestations with the support of the antibody tests. This is a biopsy of salivary gland and look at these are the salivary glands. These are the salivary glands and look at this blue spots. These blue spots are actually the lymphocytes that have infiltrated the gland. These are the lymphocytes, these blue spots. These are all the lymphocytes that have infiltrated the salivary glands. Another thing that can be done in these patients for the eye manifestations is that Schirmer test. In Schirmer test, it shows that there is decreased ear production. You can search out the Schirmer test, how is it performed. Basically, they test the tear production in this test and the tear production is decreased. Another thing they do is that they do slip lamp examination in Rose Bengal stain where they see that the tear film, every time you blink, there is a tear film that covers the eye and protects the eye from outside environment, outside dust, outside pollution. And uh, in these patients, this tear film is very weak due to the less production of the lacrimal gland, less production of the tears. This tear film is very weak and this breaks away earlier and eye is exposed to the air. Therefore, there is a gritty sensation, the sensation of dryness in the eyes. Remember the most important thing are the antibodies the most accurate test is labial uh, biopsies, library gland biopsy. Coming to the treatment of Sjogren's syndrome, in the treatment of Sjogren's syndrome, it's mainly a symptomatic supportive care type treatment. Coming to dry mouth, for the treatment of dry mouth, you get the patient to have regular dental checkups because as we said, uh, saliva has antibacterial activity and when the saliva is lost, they, these teeth can develop dental caries. Adequate hydration is important to keep the mouth wet. Foods that stimulate the salivary flow like dry fruit slices. You tell the patient to keep some dry fruit slices with themselves and try to chew them. Chew them more often rather than swallowing them so that there is more stimulation of the residual salivary gland that is present. Because some of the salivary gland would be damaged but some would be still there that is producing salivary gland uh, that is producing the saliva. So you tell them to chew these dry fruits so that it stimulates production of saliva. Sugar-free lozenges are there, gum is there. So you tell them to keep chewing so that it keeps stimulated and produces salivary gland. Artificial saliva can also be administered to these patients. This is the first line treatment. Giving these stimulatory agents like telling the patient to have some lifestyle changes. Uh, if these agents fail, the second line treatment is muscarinic agonist, the cholinergic agonist. Cholinergic agonist stimulate the secretions. Pilocarpine can be used 5 mg up to 4 times a day. Sevimeline can be used 30 mg up to 3 times a day, half hour before meal. So these muscarinic agonists can be used in patients with dry mouth who have not responded to the first line lifestyle change modifications. In severe cases, immunosuppressants can be given like hydroxychloroquine, but they are given rarely. In dry mouth, patients have to avoid certain things like acidic things that can damage the teeth, some things that have toxic effects on the uh, uh, salivary glands like coffee, alcohol, tobacco, cannabis smoke, cola drinks are acidic and they damage, they cause dental caries, anticholinergic medications that cause dry mouth. For the treatment of dry eyes, in the treatment of dry eyes, you tell these patients to have humidifiers in their home so that the environment is humid. Avoid going out in dry environment. They should have, uh, uh, they should shield their eyes with glasses from wind and use air humidifiers in home. Artificial tears are given to these patients. If these treatments fail, 
in the moderate disease you give topical immunosuppressants like cyclosporins to reduce the immune system attack on the uh, lacrimal gland in systemic diseases you you use systemic immunosuppression for systemic immunosuppression cyclosporin is used in these patients with cyclosporin rituximab can also be used in systemic diseases so first line treatment avoiding dry environment covering the eyes with glasses using air humidifiers and giving the artificial tears and then moderate diseases topical immunosuppression in systemic disease where there are systemic manifestations you use systemic immunosuppressants the complications of sjogren syndrome are very important one complication that you must remember from this lecture is the b cell lymphoma the malt lymphoma very commonly tested point in exams in exams they will ask you that patient has sjogren syndrome what uh, what if this patient is at risk of developing which disease this patient is at risk of developing b cell lymphoma malt lymphoma very high yield this is the single most important complication that you must know corneal scarring ulcer rupture can take place renal tubular acidosis type 1 can occur in sjogren syndrome pregnancy if the patient gets pregnant fetal loss infant with neonatal lupus syndrome and complete heart block just like neonatal lupus is common with sjogren syndrome if you like my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on rheumatology lectures and emergency medicine lectures the link of those videos is given in the description below we talked about what is Sjogren's syndrome, more common in females, primary and secondary, the salivary gland present, uh, gets damaged and the presentation, lacrimal gland gets damaged and the presentation, Sika syndrome which is isolated dry mouth with dry eyes with no systemic manifestations, other symptoms, extra glandular symptoms are Thalgia, most common one, dysphagia, Raynaud's phenomena, clinical presentation. Uh, the diagnosis made with specific antibodies and the clinical symptoms the most accurate test is the labial biopsy biopsy showing lymphocytic infiltration Schirmer test slit lamp examination for eyes treatment for dry mouth first line second line is pilocarpine and sevimeline things that patients need to avoid in dry eyes the first line treatment artificial tears and air humidifiers complications of Sjogren syndrome the most important one being b cell lymphoma if you like my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on my YouTube channel. If you are following this channel and you are watching our videos and want to support this channel for doing producing more videos, you can always support us on Buy Me A Coffee. Thank you very much.